what's your private cloud security groups network access control lists and subnets are all uh, somewhat similar terms and we must understand how these are going to helpful in security uh, when we design like a uh, architecture so today what we are going to do is we are going to take a scenario uh, we are going to see what are the different threats uh, we have on like you know based on the scenario and how these tools are going to help us to mitigate some of the security risk so let's get started if you have any questions feel free to like you know comment down in the section below if you have any uh, suggestions like future videos please drop it down as well and if you haven't already please subscribe and like the hit the like button so scenario we are going to uh, take a look at is uh, let's say you are working as a security architect and then you need to create like you know uh, a web application or you need to host a web application so of course you are going to create an ec2 instance we are going to just take a simpler scenario so you are going to create an ec2 instance uh, which is going to host like you know web application of course you'll have some dynamo db and some other uh, supporting uh, services uh, running in the aws now what is the threat that it offers now the simplest threat we can think of is what if an attacker can connect and compromise the ec2 from the internet because this ec2 is going to be uh, hosted like you know in the cloud of course anyone uh, uh, with access to internet can obviously uh, like you know talk with so what is the control we can think of uh, think for this so the control we are going to think is uh, so first let's start with the virtual private cloud so what is VPC uh, VPC uh, you can imagine as uh, like you know a traditional network uh, where you have like you know in the data center uh, where you have your own network where people would uh, use like VPN to connect and and do like you know whatever they need to do so VPC is just like your traditional network um, uh, that's operating your own data center so it's going to bifurcate or it's going to differentiate from all the other network that we have in the cloud because in the cloud you can imagine there is Azure, G GCP even within AWS there are a lot of networks uh, so yeah if you want to di differentiate and you want to break it down in the smaller section that's where VP that's what VPC does so how is VPC going to help us uh, from this threat? Because VPC has uh, multiple uh, security features which we can configure and if rightly configured, it's going to help us like, you know, prevent this threat. So let's, let's take a look at more detail. So uh, looking through the same threat, now we have the VPC which is running in our single region. Now how do we make sure our EC2 is not accessible to the internet? because of course we're gonna have like internet gateway and stuff for the web applications to run so one thing we, what we can do is we can set up a private subnet so within the vpc you have option to submit like you know have public and private subnet and private submit as suggest like as the name suggests it does not have like directly uh, it does not accept direct uh, connections from the internet so suppose if you want uh, your ec2 to, to connect to the internet so you'll use like a bastion host or a net device so it's able to communicate but of course your server itself is not directly exposed moreover what we can do is we can also enable like a flow log and flow log will help you uh, monitor what are the connections going in and out of the vpc uh, if if you want to monitor what kind of uh, like you know uh, information being Con, uh, conveyed from the EC2 to uh, like you know whoever is the IP connecting to so you can monitor all the flow logs you can also send it to the cloud watch you can create a metric and alarm and stuff like that so these are all the security benefits and hence we will like you know we'll, con we'll protect our EC2 uh, uh, within the private subnet now next thread although comes is what if any IP address can connect to EC2 via SSH or RDP of course we have this ec2 instance and many times for support troubleshooting maintenance uh, we open up the uh, we have multiple ports open obviously we'll have the uh, 443 ports open because we want uh, users to connect to our application but then we'll have ssh port open or maybe perhaps rdp now to control uh, to prevent against this threat what we're going to use is security group so this is another term which uh, like you know which is different from uh, vpc and private subnet so what security group does is it controlling the traffic that is allowed and like you know allowed to reach and leave the resources within the subnet so uh, in our case we have ec2 which is running within our subnet so now it's going to it's going to attach to a particular uh, resource so now this 
security group is going to attach to this EC2 and will say, okay, what kind of protocol and what kind of IP address can connect via this protocol? And what kind of like, you know, um, so uh, one thing about the security group is it's going to be a, like an outbound connection is allowed by default, but only the inbound connection uh, is something like, you know, you can restrict and, and, and you can configure because by default, it, it doesn't allow any inbound traffic. So to, to obviously like, you know, protect that no one can access uh, our EC2 from SSH or IDP, we can set up a security group. We can attach that with the EC2 and then we can put the rules like inbound port 22 SSH only from this IP. And we can say outbound we want like, you know, all the traffic uh, can go using port 443 TLS, this is this. Also, we can set up one more inbound port where inbound rule where we say inbound port 443 TLS from any IP because we want uh, TLS connection from any IP to any IP, but SSH and RDP has to be restricted to our trusted IP address. So this is all going to lock down our EC2 as much as we can. However, there is another control uh, that we should talk about and, and it's going to be very helpful as well. So network access control list. Uh, this one is sort of like a defense in depth because we are already restricted who can connect and how, uh, like, you know, what protocol one can connect to our EC2. But let's say we also want to uh, have additional control, then we can put put like, you know, ACL in, ACL in place. So how is that going to work? So you have intent here, right? And then there is an intent gateway, of course. Uh, whenever the traffic is coming in from intent gateway, the route table uh, will determine where the traffic should be routed. Once the traffic is routed, it will come to access control list or network access control list. This will determine what kind of traffic is allowed as well as what kind of traffic can go outside from the subnet right so within a subnet which traffic can go in and out and then once the traffic goes in so for example let's say traffic is going here and one of our access control list says traffic should only be allowed from ip 10.0.0.1 so the traffic is from there it will allow and then when it hits uh, like you know hits to the uh, to the EC2 it's going to check the security group and if the security group says yes that IP address is allowed and, and for a certain port then only then that traffic will be allowed so this is like you know a uh, defense in depth that's why that's what I, I like you know uh, uh, is going to be very helpful because sometimes what you have is so one main key difference is ACL is going to serve as a subnet level while security group is at the resource level it controls the traffic which is going in and out of the uh, out of the uh, resource within the subnet and now we discuss so many terminologies let's let's just revise like you know key points quickly so first VPC defines the network and isolates from other network in the cloud which is uh, very clear. Security group attaches to the resource and specifies the allow rules. As I said, you cannot uh, specify outbound rules, but yes, inbound you can definitely uh, 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 specify. Security groups are stateful. Return traffic is always allowed. So return traffic is outbound traffic is always allowed from the resource. Network access control list is attached to the subnet and applies to all resources within subnet. So sometimes if you forget to attach, let's say you have like, you know, 5,000 resources and you uh, you forgot to define the sub uh, security group for a given a given resource, then uh, sub, uh, access control list by default will provide you uh, that restriction that yes, only this particular like, you know, uh, traffic will be allowed. So it, that's why it also sometimes it's unintentional and we forgot to to create a security group then yeah this is very helpful as we said network access control is defense in depth and it's stateless so here you can define both return traffic uh, as well as the inbound traffic one thing though return traffic is denied by default so it will not allow any traffic go outbound so your customer will be blocked if you do not define the return traffic so yeah these are uh, like you know some of the key points uh, i hope this was all clear to you if you have any further questions feel free to check it down in the comment section i'll, I'll try my best to respond and as always uh, please subscribe to my channel and we'll see you guys next week bye